In this video, let's begin diving in closer and taking a more detailed look into the ad we are creating. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. So in the ads manager in Facebook, what you're going to do is this is our ad that we were setting up and so all you do is just edit and we're going to go and edit some of the details. And one thing that's going to help you is to understand the difference between a campaign, a set and individual ads. We've gone over this, but this is a really confusing part of running ads and many first time ad publishers get it confused and stay confused with it. One way to help us understand it is that we have one campaign and campaign is our sort of like this grand initiative. You can think of it that way. And you can look at the hierarchy on the left, the conversion test, that's our campaign. In it, we can have many ad sets and an ad set has some similarities like targeting so that in our individual ads, you see the third item in the hierarchy can borrow from the ad sets and it's going to become clear as we go on. But if you think of it in this hierarchy, it's already a great way to organize it. Now, here's one way I'll be able to give you an example of how this works. So let's say I start to manage my campaign budget. So this is for the entire campaign. Now, if I turn this on, it's going to say, you want to spend like $5 a day. Okay, fine. We're not focused on the $5 a day, but what we are focused on is this little text here. And I'm going to explain to you what it says. So by turning this on, you're combining the remaining budget of your active ad sets. So all the budget in your ad sets, what that means is if you have like 10 ad sets right now, I just have one in this test it's an example, but if, let's say you have 10 or 20 or 30 ad sets and they have many ads running under them. Guess what? If you set your campaign budget to just $5 for the entire campaign, that's the spending across all the ad sets. So the $5 would go to everything under what's called conversion test, and it will get spread throughout the ad sets. You see how just by controlling one part of the hierarchy, we're able to control parts of the hierarchy down lower. So just keep thinking of this hierarchy this way. And before you know it, this terminology campaign sets, individual ads, it's going to become second nature to you. And you're just going to go like, Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's going to make sense. And after that, a lot of these details will become immediately less confusing before you get this right. It's really confusing. I know because I've been there myself. And so I wanted to spend a little extra time on this because it's a test ad. I'm going to set like $1 spending just so that I don't click the wrong button while testing it while filming it and then end up spending a lot of money. So let's say we do that. And now let's go to the ad set. And here we're going to be able to edit a lot of the information for our ad. Specifically, what we're interested in is the audience because this is our targeting. So recall that the example we are using is promoting like business education products, entrepreneurship education products. So who would be good for this? This is where we pick the audience. And what we want to do is we actually want to be specific about it because look on the right side, Facebook tells us you can reach like 220 million people potentially so far with our current targeting, but it's perhaps too many and we need to narrow it down. Now, people who might be interested in our product are not a good fit. We want to get as close as possible to people who are extremely ideal to our target market because they're going to buy at a higher rate and our ads have a higher chance to become profitable. So we're going to narrow down. There are a few countries that have disproportionately high spending. So United States is one of them. UK is another one, another country or England or United Kingdom, however you phrase it, Canada and Australia. Every other country has a couple of issues, either they're not English first speaking countries, or they don't have a high um, uh, spending per person. 
in your case, if you already have an audience, you can take a look at where they're from. In my case, around 50% of all my sales come from these four countries. So now we have locations and an even bigger audience. Now we need to do the hard work of narrowing down the rest of the targeting. So the first is age, and we have to think about it seriously. Well, who spends? Young people, they typically don't spend as much, right? So let's get college graduates. Let's say they're 22 years old. I'm not saying that anybody below 22 years old is not going to buy my courses. Many people do, but the thing is that we want to pick an ideal audience. In fact, because this particular product that I'm selling is like a discounted product, so I want it to be not a, I, I don't want it to be a difficult decision. So I'm actually going to go and target a demographic for whom like spending is like an afterthought, like spending a few bucks online is an afterthought and they're going to be over 30. And again, I actually feel bad excluding people who are under 30, but this is not a popularity contest. This is just me trying to pinpoint like a sniper, like see who is an ideal spending range. And then I'm going to also narrow down the high end part of the age and who spends money. Let's say people like, let's say 40 up to 45 years old, maybe even a little less, they would be good because they're typically in the prime earning of their career. And people who are a little older than that, they tend to hit a different trajectory where they tend to get towards the end of their career. And they maybe they sense like, oh, they're not going to make as much money in the future, so they start spending less. But this can also go either way because they need cheaper education and maybe what I'm selling is perfect for them. In my case, let's exclude them because again, it may be safer to exclude some group as long as we are targeting a group that is still perfect for us. Now, I also know that, of course, I want all men and women to get my content, of course, but I know that by looking at my previous sales, I know that it appears more to men. So I'm going to actually just click on only men. Sorry, women, I appreciate my female customers and I want them to become customers. But in this case, I just know that my buying demographic is more the male demographic. Now the language is English, that's perfect. And now let's get into actual targeting. So what we've gotten before are demographics that we can measure with a lot of accuracy. Someone for, who's from Canada, they're from Canada. So there's a very little error, but the following are going to be more error prone. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to in things like interests and things like that. So we've already chosen people who are interested in, in entrepreneurship. So let's take a few additional suggestions that they have. Business owners, maybe owner and CEO. Maybe when somebody calls them CEO, that's a little deceiving because CEO is a title that tends to be reserved for managers who manage companies that are of certain size. But sometimes people call themselves CEO of their company of one. What we're after is new entrepreneurs. So small business owners, this is what we need. And small business interest, yeah, this is what we need. Founder, this is what we need because the founder needs this self-employed because these people need these kinds of educational products that I'm selling here. So owner, sole proprietor, that's great. And we can pick a few more of these. Obviously, we would not pick female entrepreneur if we excluded all women. But if we included only women, then we maybe should only do female entrepreneurs. And look how narrow this audience size is, 13,000, almost 14,000. If we had gone with a different type of ad, like a second kind of ad we would add, maybe it can be a female-centric ad that targets only female entrepreneurs and has copy that speaks directly to women. That might be very powerful because women would see, oh, it's for me, and then they might respond to that. Now, in my case, I'm just going for general business interests of freelancers, and we're going to be done with that. And these groups, they're okay, but they're a little broad. I'll give you an example of what, what might be a little more narrow. For example, if I have some online training for how to become like a YouTube megastar, and then I type here YouTube, 
and then I see, okay, YouTube employers as a company, I don't want them. Somebody, YouTube job title, I don't want people who work at YouTube. YouTube school, maybe, because maybe this is people who train YouTubers. YouTube interests, sure, but maybe this is people who just like watching. But YouTubers, these are people who are creating videos on YouTube. And these people, they most of them, people who create videos on YouTube, most of them create a little bit and then they fail because they just don't get enough views. They don't know what's wrong. So a course like I potentially might have that teaches people how to become a YouTube megastar, that's a perfect fit for them. So it's a relatively small audience, right? It's only like 2 million people, which is actually really gigantic. So what we could do is just create an ad for them, get rid of all these other things potentially, and just target them with like a YouTube specific ad. Now that would be more specific targeting. In this case, now we're not going to do that, but in general we could, and that might get us better results. Now, if we are targeting people who, let's say they're, you know, founders, business owners, what we don't want is people who want jobs, right? We want people who are independent on their own. So who do we want? We want an audience to exclude. So maybe we want like career, like people who want career typically means they want jobs. Yeah. So we want to exclude career, career development. We don't want that audience. We don't want like resume groups. So it's okay if we take in some people out who might actually get our products, but really we want to make sure we don't want people who might also be interested in jobs. So let's look at like people who got a new job. We don't really want them. So we can kind of go through this and add things. But in general, you, we see that we're excluding enough people. Now let's include additional people who might seem like they might be a good fit for us, but they might not. What about people interested in finance and money? So let's just people who are interested in money, but money management, we don't want them. Let's, let's look further. None, none of those really represent any good options. So maybe we look at, let's say, finance. We don't want the traders. We don't want equity, things like that. So we can actually take out a lot of things with stock market, right? Because that's not what I'm selling per se. So we're taking out a lot of these guys. And then you want to go through a lot of industries that are maybe kind of, could be kind of potentially related, but are not really. And we're only doing this because the ad we are promoting is a general course discount page. But ideally what we would do is promote like one course that is on some topic, for example, YouTube, or like if you have like a course on like how to make money dog walking, then sure. Then you want to target people who they need money and they love dogs, something like that. And then you would exclude a lot of other attributes like if they already have a job or if they don't need money. But so you want to end up with people who are looking for ways to turn their hobby into a career. So now you understand how to bounce around between these kinds of targeting settings. And for whatever your product is, you want to go and find a narrow audience who would absolutely be perfect for your product. And you want to spend a disproportionate amount of time trying to find the right targeting because if you get the wrong people, they're not going to buy. If you get somebody who likes sports, but really they're more interested in cooking, but you're selling them sports products, forget it. They're not going to buy. You're going to waste your money. So you've got to make sure that you're really strict about identifying your audience and making sure you are accurately targeting them. And then you can move on because this is one of the most important parts of setting up your ad.